Hello all sentient beings and welcome to Transmissions Ultimode where we talk about all news, comics, and media related to the... On this episode of Transmissions Ultimode, we review Transformers Galaxies Issue 3 and talk about upcoming solicits for 2020. But the big news is an historic guest announcement by TF Nation. Who's coming? Who's it going to be? You're just going to have to listen and find out. Today is Black Friday, November 29th, 2019. The countdown to Christmas has begun, and this is episode 157 of Transmissions Alt Mode. Welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode, the podcast that can't wait to read the next big IDW event comic, Cybertruck. It's bulletproof, but can it love? I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how you doing? And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey, what's happening? Let's talk Transformers. All right. Uh, And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing a real-life Transformer from Elon Musk soon in the Tesla line. Likely. Our only saving from it taking over the world is eventually it'll run out of battery power. <laughs> All right. As always, we begin the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who give us money on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you so much for helping us continue to do this show. And if you'd like to become a Donatrion, if you're not one already, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. You can also buy some cool merchandise from us at our T Public store. That's at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. Uh, lots of t-shirts, uh, other th- merchandise. And there's a big Black Friday sale going on. Uh, today happens to be Black Friday when this show goes up, but the, sh- the sale's been going on for over a week. Uh, they should really, I guess, call this Black Month because... What? Sales. Oh, no, that that's, well, we already have that in February. Anyway. Daryl and I aren't, aren't even going no. there. <laughs> you can make all the jokes you, you want with that, Charles. I'm not, uh, not going to step on any of them. Good advice. <laughs> anyway, Black Friday sale going on now until December 1st. Everything is 35% off at Public. So if you use our link, uh, that'll help us out, but you'll also get a hefty discount. So... Again, transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. Uh, you can also ke- check out our friend of the show, K-Girl, and her store at TeePublic. That's at tpublic.com slash user slash superstar K. Uh, she's got lots of awesome designs, too. We've got some on our store as well. So help her out and help us out. All right, let's uh, start off with some comics news. Uh, first up, we've got uh, some cool uh, cover art, uh, just like a behind the scenes cover art uh, stuff from Kay Zama. She put up on Twitter uh, her process for developing the art for the cover art for issue 14 of the new Transformer series and issue 18, which is not out yet. So uh, you can check out her process there and see the finished, uh, yeah, at least the, the finished inks of her art, uh, that was then colored. I, I don't think she colors her own art. So, uh, I think it was Josh Burcham. Yeah. Josh Burcham. Cause yeah, they, they, they go well together cause they worked on the Optimus prime series together. This is really neat. I, I like seeing like the first one is like the different options she gave and like, you know, before one was approved. Mm-hmm. And just seeing how, like, you know, the facial expressions on these, like, really rough sketches. Yet still, this is immensely more than I could ever do, even the rough ones. <laughs> yeah, this really, uh, it's it's really uh, a nice evolution there. And then with issue 18, uh, this is uh, the upcoming issue that that's just going to be teased in uh, um, in the solicits this month. And this cover image features RC and Greenlight, so that's uh, they've been mentioned in the main series, but uh, I guess they're getting their. Uh, well, Greenlight's been in the series already, but RC gets her debut in this issue here. I guess RC's been shown like in the distance, very far in the distance, as a little as a little speck uh, in the background. But anyway, K 
Kazama art good covers. Uh, also, we have uh, the solicitations for February 2020 uh, for IDW Transformers comics. Uh, of course, we have the continuing series, Transformers number 18. And we've got Transformers Galaxies number 6. Uh, Galaxies uh, is the anthology kind of spotlighty series, and Galaxies number six is part two of the Cliff Jumper story arc, written by Kate Leth and Cohen Edenfield, or Edenfield, and art by Alex Milne. So we are definitely looking forward to that, and uh, particularly the cover image that they showed off for this issue is just uh, pretty amazing. So take a look at that if you if you're if you don't uh, care about spoilers for your covers, well, it's just a cover. You know, it's not really much to be spoiled there. Might not um, have anything to do with the book at all. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, we've also got a Transformers Valentine special. Uh, this is uh, a one shot that's coming out uh, and apparently will feature two Bumblebee repates falling in love. So we've got Glyph and Tap Out. Yeah, tra- so explicit Transformers romance. I think this is uh this is uh I mean, we've had Transformers uh, you know, romances uh in the that that was introduced in, you know, officially in the previous universe but and has been you know has been continued now with a, a couple of characters in the new series but not really emphasized, but now we've got an actual <laughs> uh I guess romance comic for Transformers. Is this is this going to be some of that hardcore robot on robot action that everyone's been wanting, Charles? Um, maybe. <laughs> you read the solicits, right? You know what happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this a is this a, a NC seventeen rated rated comic? I, no, it's it. The, I think the romance will be PG. Don't get your hopes up, all you pervs out there. Aww. <laughs> What I think is interesting about this whole thing is that it's got a backup story, which is something that we, like, or at least I often beg. Mm-hmm. We need more backup stories in comics. Yeah, we well, got to and... you got to explain how the, the 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 pipes in the in the in the kitchen got clogged <laughs> for the plumber to get called in the first place. It's r- romance and porn are not the same thing, Daryl. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Why did the pizza guy get called? Why? <laughs> it might be different in Canada. <laughs> yeah, so again, so that is um that's also I guess the main story written by Kate Leth and Patrick L and the backup story written by Kate Leth and her real life partner Cohen Edenfield, Edenfield. I don't know which one that's whether which one is right. But I bet yeah. you're flustered. Yeah, I am. It's uh, you know, I'm anticipating this romance comic. Uh, also, uh, we've got uh, the IDW Collection Phase 2, Volume 11. That is, uh, we're continuing to uh, roll out the Phase 2 comics, uh, Phase 2 collections. This one is going up to the 50th issues of both the main series of uh, More Than Meets the Eye and Robots in Disguise. Or I guess that was just Transformers at the time. Uh, also, it will have the Dinobots uh, Redemption one shot. So, that's a particularly a good collection there. With I mean, the spe- specifically with more than meets the eye and Megatron and the DJD, uh, that's a you know, that's a pretty good arc to have in that collection. Uh, they're also it looks like they're also re releasing the first ten volumes of the IDW Phase Two hardcover collection that month as well. So. Maybe they're just refreshing the stock, so you can you can pick them up and order them if you're missing any. All right, well, that's all our comics news, so let's move on to our comic review. In our comic review this week, we are reviewing Transformers Galaxies number three. This is written by Tyler Blazinski, art by Olivia Ramondelli, letters by Tom B. Long in what I believe is his final issue with IDW. Uh, editors David Marriott and Tom Waltz. Uh, we have three covers. Uh, the first one has the Constructicons trapped inside Devastator's head. Uh, this is by Olivia Ramondelli. 
cover B shows Termagax and Devastator working on a building project, and this is done by Winston Chan, uh, Transmissions supporter and listener. And a retailer incentive has a Termagax and Wheeljack uh, being scanned by Devastator, who's behind them. And this is by Angel Hernandez and Josh Burcham. So, uh, Daryl, let's start with you. Which one of these three do you like? Um, well, I mean, I kind of joked about it a uh, episode or so ago, but I, I seeing them all next to each other, I still, I think I'm still going to go with the one I kind of I wanted to pick, and that is uh, Winston Chance. I, I think it's a really well done cover. The lines are really well done, and uh, it's just it, it's it's a nice picture of Devastator and uh, Termagax. You know, it's nothing against the other two, but I just I like uh, I like Winston's lines quite a bit. Uh, it tends to remind me a lot of uh, of Casey Collar's lines. Mm-hmm. They're just very clean, and uh, yeah, I just I like it a lot. A lot of detail in it, but not too uh, uh, messy. Charles, how about you? Uh, I think I'm gonna actually go for Livio Ramondelli's cover. I just like the simplicity of that cover and the imagery of uh, Devastator and all the Constructicons trapped in his head. Uh, so, given the the content of this issue, I think it's a it really uh, matches uh, what's going on in this chapter. I I like Winston's a lot, but I think it seems a little bit too bright for the the kind of tone of the book. Uh, I'll probably pick it up in the store when I when I see it, but I have to agree with you Charles. The Livio cover just it basically is a nice summary of of the story. The guy's stuck in his head. Yep. Into the the summary real quick. During the rebuilding of Icon, after the war against the Threefold Spark, uh, Wheeljack is amazed and afraid at what he's seeing. The combined form of the Constructicons is working on one of the final buildings in Icon. He's still afraid of the destruction that it is capable of, but he's happy to be wrong. Inside the giant's mind, however, there's a battle. The six Constructicons are fighting the pressure and struggling to finish the job. Suddenly, they feel like they're all being sucked into blackness. When outside, the giant's eyes glow in a single band of light, and it destroys the building with a smile. Termagax is able to get it to listen and able to get the Constructicons to separate. And once on the ground, they they explain that they were fighting a seventh consciousness, and they lost this time. Wheeljack is adamant that they are not to combine again, while Termagax still wants to learn and believes that the team can maintain control. All they need to do is stop fighting the rage, and maybe the other consciousness will work with them. They agree to try, and they begin their cleanup work. Later, Wheeljack is addressing the Senate about his views. He wants them to prevent the team from combining again, but Termagax says that they can beat it, and they've done great work for Cybertron. Nominus Prime agrees with her that they have done great work, but so has Megatron and his miners and the engineers and all the other teams. He does agree to let them finish their work, but afterwards they're going to have to find some way for them to work off the Energon debt that they've accumulated by all the combining. Cycles later, they have finished the, the building that they had destroyed, and Icon shines brightly. Celebrating their work, Nominus presents them with Cybertronian badges of honor, as tokens of gratitude of their sacrifice. They're elated. However, Hook sees some other bots in the, the, the distance with the exact same badges. It seems that these are being handed out to everyone. After the celebration, Nominus lets them know that they're going to a nearby planetoid that's rich in Energon and there to set up a processing facility. They look forward to the challenge, even though they'll miss home. To be concluded. So... I, I thought I wasn't really expecting a, a flashback like this for the entire book, but um, we get a lot of kind of just explaining what I guess we had assumed through the previous issues. But it was a, a decent story, I think. Um, I, I thought Wheeljack had some good lines where he seemed to always kind of be muttering like, you know, I hate to say I told you so, but you know, I was kind of right. I told you so. Um, I, I thought that was written really well. Um, I find it's odd that we're getting so much more on Termagax here than in the main book, where Termagax seems to be 
like this big influence on Megatron, but we're never seeing it. But I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed the book, but not really as much as the last one. I don't think I, I do like seeing the Constructicons and their, their battles. And in particularly, I liked how when they're in control of Devastator, we see the Devastator with the two distinct eyes. But um, when the Devastator consciousness takes over, it's the visor. Uh, I thought that was a nice way of, you know, taking the, those two looks of Devastator that we've had in the past and incorporating them here. Uh, Daryl, what were your thoughts on that? Um, well, it is it's it is slower than I usually would like for myself, but um, I did kind of uh, figure that in going into it. Uh, I I did like th- what you were just talking about there, the uh, the internal battle, um, you know, of the the six individual personalities trying to struggle with the uh, the seventh. I'm interested to find out is this seventh, you know, is this a seventh personality that's that's given to uh, that comes from the um, the 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 Enigma, yeah, or is it uh, uh, something that kind of is just kind of uh, awoken in all of them and is kind of, you know, a piece comes from each one of them to kind of make that seventh, uh, you know, personality? Um, And why is it angry? You know, why are they trying to suppress this rage? Um, Yeah, well, and also what's that that new filtered energy that they're they're like ingesting? Right. How is that going to affect it? Yeah. Now the um, I just thought of that. Uh, yeah, as far as the the like the entirety of the story, it it um it kind of did explain why they uh, or like how they ended up on the planetoid that they uh, they started the book off on. Um, reading it, I was trying to think like, you know, didn't we see them combine for the first time on this planetoid? You know, in issue one, but I guess no. It was okay. Yeah, it was the same time period, like where they were. They had just been forged, and they were clean. They were gotcha. cleaning an area and okay. accidentally discovered so, the enigma. Yeah, but other than that, um, it's an okay. It's an okay story. Like I said, it's a little slow. Um, I liked in the at the end when they were being uh, shuttled off to this uh, this new spot. Um, it uh, you know the, our. Livio had put in the uh, the 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 panels uh, showing Cybertron moving further and further away in their window. Um, it just that was a nice little touch to to indicate how how far they were moving. All of these symbols, like obviously you meant you mentioned that the symbol they were given was uh, just a, a symbolic kind of thing. Um, it's an Autobot logo, right? So, yeah, it, essentially, exactly. It, and and uh, you see on the. On the shuttle that they're they're getting sh- sent off on, it's it's an Autobot shuttle as well, right? So you can see the symbol on the side there. So it's a there's ties to the Autobots already on this, you know. Perhaps they're they're kind of, you know, they rebel in the fourth the fourth issue of this to the against the Autobots about putting them where they were. Um, I mean, they seemed pretty okay with it here at the end, but uh, yeah, maybe they're just they're fed up. They've been left there too long, and they're just upset. Anyway, uh, I mean, it's, it's it's a decent story. Uh, it's, it is moving a little slow for me. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready for it to pay off in the fourth issue. Charles, what were your thoughts? Uh, f- I guess first I'll, 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 we didn't talk about the art, so I'll just mention that I think Livio's art is really well done here. I like uh, – we, we get Nominus Prime in addition to Termigax and Wheeljack, so that's uh, that's cool. And uh, the the atmosphere and everything is really well done. I think the story by itself is is okay, but the problem I have with the story is that I think most of it is redundant given the first two issues. Like the first issue already set up, you know, how they became Devastator and how they were rebuilding Icon. I mean, we get a little bit more detail about that, but it's all stuff that I mean was implied or we could figure right. out from the context of the first two yeah, issues. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. And yeah, that that leaves me a little bit frustrated. I mean, you've got four issues and you spend the entire third issue where you should be ramping up the story just doing a flashback. I'm like, you know, we we left off at the point where Bombshell was, you know, starting to uh, 
uh, to corrupt the Constructicons. I thought we were going to see a progression of that in this issue. And with what issue left, I mean, what do, what are we? Where is the story going to end here? It seems like we're gonna we're gonna end on. I don't know a cliffhanger or, or how there's not it doesn't seem like there's going to be space to wrap things up when you took a whole issue just doing a flashback. So that just that just leaves me a little bit frustrated. Yeah, I mean, I, I was hoping to get more of the backstory on the Insecticons, but I guess we did get that last issue too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we've got. I think they the first two issues sufficiently set things up and gave us backstory for all the characters. I think the third issue needed to move the story forward, yeah. and I don't think this moves the story forward. It's almost I mean, like it was a three-issue arc, the whole... and then they decided that you get four issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess the whole thing with, with the Devastator consciousness, that is uh, that is a, a major point here, but... I mean, I think that could have been done like you could have done you could have had that story element by and added additional elements in the current like in the in the present day with Bombshell and the Insecticons and then, you know, just maybe had briefer flashbacks back to Devastator and they're recognizing this seventh consciousness. But yeah, it just it just left me a little little frustrated with this issue. Well, I guess we'll just look and see how it wraps up. Um, and also, I'd like to, you know, I mentioned it with the, the credits, but uh, from everything I've seen on social media, uh, this was Tom B. Long's last issue, uh, for now at least. And we'll be interested to see how the, the lettering changes. You know, I'm sure we, we've seen other letters on some of the other series, but it's just so used to having that consistent thing, regardless of, of who's doing the art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's to you, Tom Belong. Thanks for all the years of work, Tom. Our favorite letterer. Yep. All right, well, and that is it for the comic review. All right, and we will move on to Transformers Media News. All right, in media news this week, uh, not a lot to uh, really discuss, but uh, first up, we've got uh, for all you Americans who are watching Cyberverse Power of the Spark on YouTube. Uh, well, episode 11 and likely 12 is up there. Uh, we have no confirmation of 12 right now, but uh, it's likely there, seeing as it uh, was on TV yesterday. So, uh, yeah, Power of the Spark continues to get uploaded to YouTube for the American audience. And uh, lastly, we've got uh, some more stuff about the uh, Transformers TCG and Wave 1 of the Energon Edition battle cards. Uh, just a couple more cards that they are previewing. Um, we're getting Agility of Bumblebee, Bombing Run, Cargo Trailer, Fusion Cannon of Megatron, Ion Blaster of Optimus Prime, and Start Your Engines. A couple of these cards I do recognize from uh, Wave 1. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, if you're into the TCG, uh, look for this best of set that's going to come out. And that's it for Media News. All right. And we will move on to Convention News. All right. We have a few big things in Convention News this week. Uh, starting off with TF Nation, uh, they have announced that Sarah Stone will be making her uh, UK Transformers Convention debut. And you know, she was the artist behind like the first Windblade series. Um, she's been doing stuff in um, for other franchises in the, the last few years, Adventure Time, Robotech, Street Fighter, stuff like that. Um, but I'm sure she will be very popular with the, the UK crowd. So it's, it's awesome. Uh, I don't think she's done a U.S. convention since like 2015 or so, at least a U.S. Transformers convention. Um, and then... They dropped a big bombshell uh, the the other night. They're going to be having Peter Cullen as, uh, I guess, their premier guest um, this year. And it will be, uh, I guess we have to, uh, with what we have next, we have to kind of phrase this right. It's his UK Transformers convention debut. And he needs no introduction. He, everyone knows who Peter Cullen is. He's the voice of Eeyore. 
Um, he is joining his Transformers Prime uh, voice actor, Tanya, Tanya uh, Gunadi, who's also going to be at the show. So that's cool. And, um, yeah, I don't I, – I think the tickets for this is, are going to sell out super fast. Mm-hmm. So – and I don't know whether uh, we got this on there, but I was seeing stuff about uh, Anna Malkova and Beth McGuire Smith also attending uh, TF Nation this year. We've talked about that in previous weeks. Did we? We announced. We yeah, did. we announced them last week. <laughs> oh, well, it was all over the twitters this week. You you were on the show last week, Daryl. Ah, uh, eh. But I don't remember. <laughs> but it is great. They they are fan artists that have moved into you know professional work with. The Transformers comics. Yeah, I think we've we've all stated that we we like their art in the series. Mm-hmm. So, and their first convention as like uh, you know, um, you know, part of the uh, you know, artist alley for a Transformers comic, they get to go to a convention well, where Peter Cullen's attending. That's huge, man. Well, it's not their first convention. I know, but they're working the show last week. They are they they were they're artists from, on a Transformers book now, though. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was saying. First show as official talent. That's what yeah. I meant to say. Yes. Right. Why couldn't you understand what I meant to say? <laughs> I, I don't understand Canadian. Um, we are, are sticking around the UK for the next, actually all the convention stories this week. At Comic-Con Liverpool 2020, which is um, going to be March 6th through 8th, they are going to be having the pair of Frank Walker and Peter Cullen. So this is their their UK debut convention, apparently. But um, they're going to be there for five hours each day on Saturday and Sunday of the, the convention. Tickets go on sale. Um, well, they went on sale November 25th. Hopefully they haven't sold out by the time you hear this. Um, you can go to comicconventionliverpool.co.uk, and that's where the tickets are. So good luck if you're going to be going to that. And uh, finally, we have uh, the Wales Comic Con. This will be uh, December 7th through 7th and 8th. They have announced that the one and only John Paul Bove is going to be uh, a guest there. If you're going to the Wales Comic Con, be sure to say hi to the JPB for, for us. We're going to have a number of really good guests at the show. So and it seems like... The, the UK com- conventions are getting a lot of the good, but that is it for convention news. All right. And we will finish up the show with some feedback. And uh, we've got another question from our Donatrion Will. Uh, we answered his question in the main toy show about our first Transformers toy. And Will would also like to know what was our first Transformers comic? Uh, so he did answer this one for us. He didn't answer the toy question, but he did answer this one. So Will says he, I vividly remember seeing Transformers UK number 17 in my local news agent and being hooked. I can trace the last 35 years of fandom back to that issue. All right, uh, Jeremy, uh, first Transformers comic, do you remember? It was Headmasters number four from the Marvel. <laughs> wow. Surprise! So you're the, still a the fan. Of, <laughs> well, it's the end of a miniseries, and I must have read and reread that a, a ton of times. <laughs> I was already a fan from the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I didn't get another Transformers comic probably for another twenty years. Oh, wow. So, I mean, until the Dreamwave era. But I just wasn't that into like going to get comics when I was that age. But. Yeah, I mean that that comic. I I still have it somewhere. It, it has been like I don't think the cover is attached anymore. But I, I read and reread that book when I was a kid, trying to figure out exactly like you know what happened before because this is a part four of a mini series. <laughs> Daryl, uh, do you remember your first co- Transformers comic? Like we've discussed earlier uh, in earlier shows, I've I was a uh, a, a fan of the this brand far before I got a, a a comic book, so I had the toys and I had the show that I was into. Um, I might have been 
12 or 13 before I ever even saw a comic. And it was at a, uh, a uh, you know, my local comic shop. And they had this pile of just loose comics on, uh, on a, like a shelf. And I was flipping through them. And I noticed that there was like a stack, like a chunk of them were Transformers comics that I'd never seen before. So it wasn't just one comic. There might have been at least maybe half a dozen to eight, eight or nine of them that were all in a, the one pile there. And I bought them all because they were pretty cheap. Um, so in that pile was, uh, I believe the earliest one was number, well, it would have been number two of the the G.I. Joe crossover. But there was also like number like eight or nine and then some 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 in the teens and all all the way up to like 67 I think was the one I remember because it had these weird characters on it that were holding the matrix that I had no idea what was going on right it's part of the matrix uh uh trilogy uh what was it called Charles it was matrix sure quest matrix quest new year it was a five it was five parts so it wasn't a trilogy. five parts <laughs> um so yeah so that was there was one part of that in there and uh, the, I knew the characters were wearing trench coats. I can remember that. Yep. And the, um, but yeah, for the longest time being young, I remember that, I remember thinking the uh, the number two that I had part of the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover was actually the number two for the Transformers series. And, uh, and thinking, okay, well, I've got number two here. I just need number, you know, I can get number one and then number, numbers three and four and I'll be good. But I actually still, I think I still have those particular comics. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, yeah, those are probably the first ones I ever bought. But I, I was, it was, it was way past when they had originally come out, so. Mm -hmm. All right, well, um, I, I do remember, like, I was not into collecting comics while, like, when I first got into transformers i was not really i was a little bit too young for comics i guess or i just not like going to the comic book store every week but i did have a couple of of transformers comics the ones i remember are i think it was it was transformers 30 it was the one with the scraplets uh like the the big scraplet monster on the mm -hmm. cover uh with that blaster was was like punching a hole through and then the i had two issues after that which was the the one where you had the protectabots fighting the combaticons at the car lot at the used car lot with mm -hmm. the um and it skipped over the man of iron uh issues so those two issues i remember i i remember having those i don't know if those were the first issues i got but those i remember those are the ones i read over and over again and then I think later I got some of the movie adaptation comics uh so you know after seeing the movie and um but then like when i to when i really started seriously collecting transformers comics and like trying to get the entire series that started with with issue 47 which was which was part 1 of the underbase saga and that was when i was like that was when i started going every every month and getting you know looking for new transformers comics every month and then going in the back issues and trying to complete all my back issues uh, and really trying to build the collection. So uh, those all have fond memories for me. Cool. Thanks, Will, for uh, for letting us uh, reminisce a little bit and hope you enjoyed our answers. All right. Well, that will do it for this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Later. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening and we'll see you again next week.